Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first pay-per-view of a brand new season of JWF Wrestling. It's time for Resurrection. I'm your host, Silver Spoon, joined by a man who you know and you love. It's Captain T. I'm back from the dead. You're back from the dead. Everybody's getting resurrected tonight. That's right, and one thing being resurrected right now is an old feud as this woman, the warrior princess, Ayana, seeks to dethrone the JWF women's champion, Val Curry, in what is Ayana's first singles pay-per-view match in Tibbs. You know the warrior princess is excited for this one. Absolutely, Sills. Ayana has a lot to prove from her JXC days, being one of the most dominant women superstars in that company, and she is coming to fight our champion, Val Curry. That is right, Tibbs. This woman, Val Curry, came on the scene like a house of fire last year. And let's not forget Ayana in her first few months undefeated, never been pinned to that mat. And the first woman to get that done in a single situation was Val Curry. But of course, ever since then, Val never was really able to get one over on Ayana again. And tonight is the night where I think the champ has to step up and prove herself. Absolutely, Sills. Val Curry has a lot to prove against one of her greatest opponents ever of all time. And she's going to prove it here tonight in JWF Resurrection or not. Well, we hope so, Tibbs. Hope I mean, so. But hope so, Sills. We got to say or not. Just throwing it out there. That is right. But there she is, the first ever JWF Women's Champion in what is set to be her first defense. The following match is for the JWF Women's Championship. In the left corner, she is the Warrior Princess, Hayana. And in the right corner, she is your JWF Women's Champion. She's the daughter of the sea, Val Curry. All right, Tibbs, and there you see Val Curry holding over that championship. Tommy making sure to give a, a good close look at that of two eye on and of course, hold it high, Shibata, as we get set for our first match on what is set to be an absolutely stacked resurrection card. Absolutely, Sills, we're coming strong out of the gate, and here we go. That's right, and oh, look at that. Oh my God, big stunner straight to the arm from Ayana. I don't know if you noticed that Val Curry was trying to start off a little bit hot and heavy, and Ayana quickly put a stop to that. But, oh wait, ooh, big back body drop leveling Val once again. Let's not forget in the build up to this. Ayana has almost tried to seem like a mentor to Val Curry. Ayana has been looking at Val and saying, this chip on your shoulder, this attitude that you have developed. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, roll up, goes for it. One, ooh, kick out. That is almost, uh, akin to how Val defeated Ayana at expiration date earlier this year. But like I said, Ayana has said, that chip on your shoulder, you better get rid of it or else that title is coming home to the Warrior Princess. Well, Sills, I think she's got a good point there. Ayana is saying to, to be the champion that you've always wanted to be, Val, you got to remove yourself from any of those old feuds, any of those old rivalries, and any of that old stuff that you're holding on to. You got to let go and look to the future. But also, Sills, I think that Ayana knows that if Val Curry has that chip on her shoulder, it might just be too easy. That is right, and that's almost what it seemed like so far, but boom, big shots to the gut from Val Curry, putting Ayana back. Oh, before, look at this, goes for the neck breaker. Wait, no, instead a big shot to the back of the head, and that is that aggressive break neck style that earned Val Curry the uh, JWF Women's Championship. 
as she's got Ayana against the ropes. Oh, went for a clothesline to the outside, but Ayana just sends her out. And, and Tibbs, this is what Ayana has been talking about this whole time. Look at Val Curry. She has been working off of emotion. She has been working off of aggression. Meanwhile, Ayana, she is a student of the game. She is well trained, and she is making sure to keep those emotions calm. And so far, it has paid off for her. Absolutely, so as you can tell, Ayana is somebody who is thinking at least two steps ahead at any given time. She saw Valkyrie running for her every single time, well ahead of time, and she had a counter for it each and every Ooh. time. Oh. Didn't have a counter for that, though. The Momoan punch, but no, wait a minute. Oh, looks like Ayana offering up a little bit of one of her own special moves. That butt butt, that hip attack, one. Two, ooh, not even a two count there. But unfortunately, Val Curry is directly in the path of the Bayonetta, but no, reverses. Ooh, big kick to the back of the leg before a massive lariat takes her down. And right now, if I'm Val Curry, I gotta keep focusing in on my game plan. I cannot let my emotions get the best of me. Absolutely, Sills. I think that Val got uh, off a little lucky on that one. She was able to rattle Ayana with that Momoan punch before she hit one of her finishing maneuvers. And then that stopped it all. That's right. Now you can see there almost going for her own variant of the, uh, the uh, Bayonetta was Val Curry. But Ayana was right there in the ropes. But wait a minute. The champ backing up, maybe looking for that patented spear. As she goes and nails it, center of the ring. One, two, two, barely taken out at the last minute is Ayana. And you can see that look, that distraught face of Val Curry. Of course, Sills, that is, uh, that is Val Curry's uh, most potent maneuver that she has in her arsenal. And the fact that Ayana kicked out even so very late, two and three quarters, it's gotta be a little disconcerting. That's right, and now look at this. Ayana with that big mule kick straight to the skull. Picks up the Daughter of the Sea once again, bounces off the rope, second hip attack straight to the face. And now Ayana, look at this, thinking wisely, dragging her away from those ropes, goes for it. One, two, two, two and three quarters. Val Curry kicking out, and now the rules looking to be reversed. Ayana wondering what it's going to take. Of course, Silson, you know, this is something that Ayana's got to be thinking of all the time. Oh. Oh, might be setting up for that decapitation kick. Can she get it? No, Val. Oh, reverses the kick into a punch. One, two. Kick out from Ayana. Uh-huh. And Sills, you saw earlier in that pinfall attempt, Ayana was smart enough to draw Val Curry away from the ropes. Val Curry had... <laughs> Ayana's got a significant height advantage, but no, oh. not after that. You height advantage don't matter when you're coming off the top, but it's not enough to put Ayana away. And now Valkyrie backing up might be looking for another spear in the center of the ring. Ayana looking dazed, looking confused, but oh, reverses into a beautiful DDT. Ayana now looking for it. Can she get it cinched in? Oh, wait a minute. No, instead opting for a second hip attack off the ropes. Boom! But it looks like Ayana not done. Maybe trying to set up for that decapitation kick. But Val Curry, oh, wasn't going to let it happen. Tried for another spear. And, I mean, you saw it. That spear was almost out of, out of aggression, out of fear. And it's what allowed Ayana to get the advantage. And now they are just brawling out on the outside once again. That's right, so I'm going to say I'm a little surprised. Ayana has had some prime opportunities to hit her, her Bayonetta maneuver on Valkyrie, and she seems to have opted not to in multiple occasions. And i got to wonder what's going on in her head. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Big kicks. Could she be setting up for it? Decapitation! Beautiful decapitation kick, but Ayana is not done with her yet. She's not done with her yet. She's calling for it. Oh, off the ropes, another hip attack straight to the jaw. Ayana building up like a head of steam right now. 
Oh, and Tim's Valkyrie may be losing that title in her first defense. Bayonetta, Bayonetta locked in, locked in in the center of the ring, but no, Valkyrie wrestling out of it with that vicious shot straight to the jaw. Oh, and then another one. Oh, and Tim's, she is backed up and she's got Ayana dazed for the spear, 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 center of the ring. Let's see that one more time. Beautiful maneuver from the daughter of the sea. And she's got to go for it, Sills. This is her, her moment right here. One, two, three. The winner of the match, and still JWF Women's Champion. Wow. And Tibbs, you know that has to feel good for Valkyrie. In the past, the way she's gotten victories over Ayana, it's been through roll-ups, it's been through clever means. She has never been able to brute force her way to a pin through Ayana throughout basically her entire career. But tonight, with the, all the stakes against her, all the odds on the line, Val Curry managed to hit that spear and get that victory. And quick thinking on the part of Val Curry as well. Getting out of that bayonetta maneuver before it was cinched in completely, before she knew her hopes were sunk. And then just going all out, putting all of her power into that one last spear to retain her JWF Women's Championship. Gotta love it, Sills. That is right, but I think the question on everybody's mind now is, what's next for Val Curry? What's up, everybody? It's everyone's favorite commentator, Silver Spoon, here to remind you that if you're enjoying the show, if you're enjoying this great JWF pay-per-view, maybe consider giving back over at patreon.com slash a load of BS. That's right, for the price of a cup of coffee a month, you can support us, the Fight Boys, a load of BS, the entire network can benefit from just a few dollars a month from you. In addition, you get exclusive content like Wrestling History X from the Fight Boys. You get to check out old episodes of JWF. They're all waiting for you over there on Patreon.com slash a load of BS. Now, Tibbs, of course, that last match, that was a grudge match from JXT, but at the end of the day, we knew Ayana and Val Curry, they still have respect for one another. But this match, this match is not about respect. This match is not about who's the best. This match is about one thing and one thing only, and that's brutality. And so, you know I love a good heaping helping of excess brutality in my wrestling. The following match is a last man standing match. Introducing first, he is a nightmare, Gauzy. Of course, this match taking place because, of course, what happened at Wrestlepalooza earlier last month. Of course, we know Gazi defeating Funky Flossie in what was an epic match to earn entry into a six-way ladder match to determine the new number one contender, which of course was won by the man who will be facing off against the champ in the main event, Chuck Gibbons. But the one man Gazi was not expecting to see in that match was none other than his opponent tonight, Papa Bliss, and we know the history of Gazi and Papa Bliss back in JXT as the team of Papa and Son, former JXT Tag Team Champions. I mean, those two men have fought for just about every title that they have down there in developmental, but I, I think now that they're back, now that they're both here on this main roster, uh, Gazi took a little bit of offense to that. I would say so, Sills. This is a real teacher-student implosion. And his opponent, hailing from the end of the cul-de-sac, it's Papa Blues. 
and tips this guy Papa Bliss. When you look at him, he, he doesn't seem like a threat. He seems like the the dad next door wants to mow your lawn, wants to help your kids figure out how to do a little toss and catch. But when the going gets tough and when Papa needs to protect his kids, he can turn it on and become a bear in that ring. And I think that's what we're looking to see tonight out of the Big Papa. I would have to say so, Sills. Papa Bliss, uh, definitely a terrifying competitor in the ring, but also somebody that you'd want to see Saturday on the golf course. That is right. And ooh, Gazi going for a big elbow strike, but Papa Bliss returning with some kicks of his own. And let me tell you something, those educated feet of Papa Bliss are absolutely deadly in that ring. Of course, Sills. He has spent a, a lifetime mastering the art of kicks. He is the Papa. He can kick like the best of them, like a damn mule. That is right, but now it looks like Gazi tried to take advantage, whipping Papa Bliss into those ropes, dropping down before, ooh, jumping over, and oh, look at that, the strength of Papa Bliss, shoulder tackling Gazi to the earth before, what is this? Oh my God, beautiful, deadlift German suplex, just plant planting him straight on his skull. And let's not forget the history of these two men. I mean, Gazi's final match in JXT, down in developmental, was against Papa Bliss. And of course, Papa Bliss coming out victorious on that night, as now they're taking it out into the crowd. Dibs, there ain't no, Shibata can't control this. This match is false, or I'm sorry, not false count anywhere. Last man standing. They can beat each other around this arena to their delight. And as long as the other one can't make it back to their feet, they earn a victory. That is very true, Sills, and I've got to say, I'm not sure who this uh, match stipulation benefits more. Papa Bliss, of course, he has the obvious strength advantage over Gazi, but Gazi is a master of hurting people, as oh. you can see. Oh. oh, but it looks like Papa Bliss taking a page out of Gazi's book, hitting him with that kendo stick. Oh, and now just clobbering him over the skull, but Gazi taking advantage, utilizing him, it is his own. And if you want to talk about who has the advantage right now, I got to say Gazi. This is Gazi's playground. There are kendo sticks, trash cans, bats, tables. Gazi has numerous things he can use to his advantage out here. Oh, like that trash can, my God. And that is, the th that is possibly Gazi's greatest strength, his creativity when it comes to utilizing any sort of random item he finds as a weapon, finding the best way to hurt somebody with a trash can, a kendo stick, a, a box, I don't know, he can hurt you with it. That's right, sending him gut first into that table. Oh, and then straight into the barricade before. Oh, Papa Bliss sending him into that production box and now dropping him on his skull once again. Oh, but Gazi coming back with a big head knocker. And, and that's the thing about Gazi right now. He is not going to show a sign of weakness to Papa Bliss, no matter what it takes. As Papa Bliss, oh, rails him with that kendo stick once again. Mm -hmm. You can see Papa Bliss is saying he is perfectly fine playing in Gazi's backyard for this match. That is right, but Gazi picking him back up and then, oh, eats a big boot straight to the gut. And now Papa Bliss trying to put those educated feet to good use, but instead gets whipped into that table by Gazi, who's now plucking him back up. What is he thinking here? What is Gazi thinking? Ooh, unfortunately, does not pay off. And Tips, was he trying for a power bomb? I, I do not think that that tiny boy can get up that big man who just cut, hits a beautiful cutter through that table. Of uh, course, uh, Sills, I don't know what Gazi was thinking there. But his, uh, his eyes might have been bigger than his stomach on that one, let's just say. Might have bit off a little bit more he could chew with Papa Blitz. That's right, and now Gazi, after being put through that table with that big cutter, is now just barely getting back to his feet. And now if I'm Gazi, I have got to be nervous right now because, oh! Uh, like I said, you got to turn it into high gear. And looks like Gazi's doing it right now with that bat that, ooh, Papa Bliss wrestles away. Of course, Papa Bliss, he seems to be able to just wrestle away in any implement that uh, Gazi has been trying to use against him. Gazi might get a few shots in, but Papa Bliss, he always decides when this is over.
That's right. Now you can see Papa Bliss trying to make his way back to the ring. Because at the end of the day, yes, Papa Bliss can go hardcore if he needs to. But at the end of the day, he is a wrestler as he pops that squat in the center of the ring. But it looks like Gazi ain't getting in the ring without a little bit of a uh, little bit of an insurance policy. Uh huh. So it looks like he uh, he wanted to get oh! those stones. Unfortunately, that insurance policy seems to not pay off as he gets ddt straight down onto those steel steps. And now Papa Bliss is taking advantage. Oh, went for the suplex, but instead Gazi, oh, went for the, uh, went for that beautiful maneuver, but instead gets a cutter straight to the jaw by Gazi. <laughs> or I'm sorry, by Papa Bliss. Well, now Papa so Bliss. I mean, you can just see, Gazi is throwing anything he can at the wall, but Papa Bliss, he is just asserting his dominance as the Papa of the pack right now. That is right, and once again, Gazi still unmoving as, oh, Papa Bliss delivers a massive kick straight to the jaw, picks him back up, and then, oh, Gazi's knee going straight into those steel steps. As Papa Bliss going to the top rope, what's the big Papa thinking here? Oh! Looks like he was going for something big, but Gazi interrupted it. But now, what's he doing? Oh my God! Papa Bliss taking a page out of the Nightmares book, just clocking him with those uh, uh, those brass knuckles. And, and now, I, I think you can count to 100. Wait, what? Gazi, he started to get back up, but Papa Bliss was ready. How? Oh, oh, wait, went for the sexy Papa kick, but no, Gazi's got him. Gazi's got him. Bloody Ooh. eagle. Beautiful. Straight in the center of the ring, went for his most devastating maneuver, that Papa kick. And then Gazi instead, look at this. This is going back to what we were talking about when it came to Valkyrie and Ayana. Gazi has a chip on his shoulder, and he's just beating the hell out of Papa Bliss when that bloody eagle may have actually got him everything he needed. What the hell's the kid thinking now? Oh, Sills, it doesn't look good. I think Gazi's wanting to end this once and for all. My God, what's he doing with those steps? He's got Papa Bliss's head crashing against that chair at the... Oh, my oh. God! Holy diver! What the hell? Gazi making a steel sandwich with Papa Bliss's head as the meat. And now, Tins, I think we just saw a man die in the middle of this ring. What the hell? I don't know, Sills. I sure as hell hope not. Oh, Sills, he's got a sledgehammer. That is right. Gazi picking up a sledgehammer on the outside almost... Papa Bliss making his way back to his feet. I, I think Gazi was getting that as an insurance policy. Oh, but it looks like Papa Bliss has got an insurance policy of his own. That steel chair as Gazi is just breaking apart our announce table. I don't think he realizes Papa Bliss is up and behind him, but oh, gets that chair out of his hand at the last minute. He, he did, Sills. Maybe he was waiting for it. I don't know. Oh, no, 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 no. Not outside. Not outside. Oh, bloody eagle onto the steel chair. My God, Gazi. Oh, Sills, that is. He I has got. Well, might be lights out for Papa Bliss, but Gazi's going back for more. He is busted open, he is bleeding, and Gazi just craves more blood as... Oh, no, no, Gazi, what the hell? You've already crushed the man's skull. What are you doing? Oh, my God! Oh! DDT straight through our announce table. What the hell is this kid thinking, Tim? I don't know, so, but he might have just broke Papa Bliss's neck. Did you see the air that man got on that DDT? And you can see Papa Bliss, a man who started this match out like a house of fire, laying in a puddle of his own blood as Gazi just has that chair in hand, almost daring the big Papa to get back up as Shibata reaches a count of eight, nine, ten. The winner of the match is a nightmare. Go! Well, gratefully, Tibbs, it is uh, 
It is over. That brutality from Ghazi putting down, I mean, his former mentor, his former tag team partner, a man that Ghazi once called father, just got put down unceremoniously by the nightmare. Oh my god. Do we have do we have to show these replays? Yes, we're contractually obligated, Sills. I'm sorry, but I, I agree with you that the horror on top of Bliss's face as he is just covered in blood and gore as Gazi was standing over him with that chair. God, it's just too horrible to watch. This is TV PG-13. Oh, and look at that. Gazi not even wanting his hand raised at the end of this match. To, to Gazi, I don't think this was a match for wins or losses. This was a match about getting aggression out, getting that chip off his shoulder. And what the hell's the kid thinking now? No. No, you got your win. You stopped. You leave him alone, kid. Leave him alone. Oh, Gazi just unceremoniously tossing Papa Bliss into the ring. He's got that steel chair in hand once again. And what the hell is Gazi thinking? He's dragging him to the center of the ring, almost like a sacrifice. Just has Papa Bliss laid out and... Oh my God, T T Tibbs, what's he doing? What's he oh, doing? So he's got he's his him in the... No! He's no, gonna crush his I, neck! I, oh! God! Gazi just snapped the neck of Papa Bliss in that steel chair before... Oh my God, kicking him in the ribs. This kid has no conscience, Tibbs. Oh, no, 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 no. Tibbs, he's got him wrapped up. He's got him wrapped up. Oh my God, just breaking the arm. My God, t turn it off. Turn it off. This summer, two men save the world. From who you ask? Everything invading robo penises. This show is not about those two men. <laughs> this show's just a load of BS. The show where Blake Tanner and Scotty Moore make up dumbass movies like that. We're your personal think tank. We're your two white guys, which fills the quota for a <laughs> podcast, I think. And we're just going to be here to have a good time and talk about sauerkraut. That's right. Except no substitutes, ladies and gentlemen, because this is that pure, uncut Yes. <laughs> good, good, uncut. Tibbs, I have no words for what we just saw. That that brutality is unacceptable from that of a JWF superstar. I'd have to say so, Sills. That is just horrible, horrible to watch. Although it certainly did get the ratings bump that I really wanted to see for this. So Papa Bliss is being taken by ambulance to a medical facility right now. We're going to have him checked out. Give him some of the best doctors available. Don't you worry. He's going to be just fine. Probably. Well, now, Tibbs, we move on to this match, a steel cage match, where these men, the Roanoke boys, are going to have a Wrestlepalooza rematch against Bananas and Pajamas with the biggest prize in the tag division on the line, the JWF Tag Team Championships. Well, Sills, I have to say, re really hope the Roanoke boys pull this one out again. Just, just really, really wanting that. The Roanoke boys, they've come together as a, an amazing tag team. They've really proven themselves over the last few months. They deserve these championship belts. They deserve to be the face of our tag team division. And Bananas in Pajamas don't. That is right, but Tibbs, I mean, if you look at Bananas in Pajamas, our current, rec our current champions, and look at their pedigree, they have asserted themselves as arguably one of the greatest tag teams in our division. That is true, Sills, and I have to give them the credit. And that is why Bananas in Pajamas, uh, well, yeah, the, God, I, I hate that they're so good, Sills. I hate it. That is right. I mean, let's not forget only three teams in the history of JWF have been able to hold those championships twice. One of them, the BS, which I don't know if we're ever seeing those two ever get in a ring again or possibly be agreeable with one another. 
Then you got the VWO, a team that is currently working our, in our developmental division, JXT, to bolster their tag team division. So that, that means the only people on our damn roster right now with those kind of accolades to have held this belt as much as anyone else is Bananas in Pajamas. I hate to say it, Tibbs, but they're the best we got. How did I let this happen, Sills? How did you let me let this happen? I can't believe this. Bananas in Pajamas, uh, they are our tag team champions, and I will give them the respect they deserve, but no more than that. That is right, and at the end of the day, history is written by the winners, which is why if the Roanoke boys win tonight, who knows, it may change the entire, the face of this entire division. It may change, ah, oh, he's doing the thing again, Tim. He does it every time, so oh, they're joining in, they're doing it. Here they go, ah, mix it up. Mix up the party punch. You really do not like these boys, huh, Tibbs? It gets worse every month, Sills. The following match is a steel cage match for the JWF Tag Team Championships. In the left corner, they are the team of Danny Roanoke and Hollywood Hulture. They are the number one contenders, the Roanoke Boys. And in the right corner, they are your JWF Tag Team Champions. The team of Joey Pajamas, Johnny Bananas, they are Bananas in Pajamas. All right, Tibbs, and there you can see the handing off of those belts and hold it high, Shibby. He's been testing me tonight. He's been holding them high at different times. I know. I told him to mix it up, Sills. So keep you on your toes, you know? That's right, you can see that steel cage being lowered around our, our competitors in this match. Beautiful DDT from Danny Roanoke starting things off inside of this horrifying steel structure. And Tibbs, let me ask you, the outside of this ring, if someone falls off the top of this thing, ain't no crash pads, ain't, ain't no metal, fake metal steel they're gonna be falling through. They're gonna be falling down onto solid concrete. That is the danger in a steel cage match like this absolutely sills because here at the jwf we don't secretly care about our wrestlers health and you know what i think that makes the product better i'll stand that, by that that is right beautiful drop kick from joey pajamas though taking out hollywood holcher as danny roanoke now going to work on johnny bananas but looks like the first to try to make an attempt to escape is joey pajamas but danny roanoke quickly putting an end to it and Sills, I'm not surprised. I will say, Bananas in Pajamas, I think that they're scared tonight. I think that they want to go for the quickest escape that they could possibly go for. But the Roanoke boys aren't going to have it. The Roanoke boys, the reason that I hate Bananas in Pajamas so much is because I like the Roanoke boys a lot better as a tag team, as competitors. I respect them more, Sills. And because they have put in the work. They, they have paid their dues. Uh, quick reminder, we are supposed to be impartial commentators as Joey Pajamas whipping Hulcher into that corner, just going at it, and uh-oh, could be looking for the banana boot. Can he hit it? Yes, straight to the skull. Joey Pajamas on like a house of fire, might be looking for that leg lariat that he likes to employ. And oh my God, straight to the skull. Hollywood Hulcher is being absolutely decimated in this early running, which is not something I would normally expect out of Hulcher. Not at all, so that, that is actually surprising to me, seeing Hollywood Hulcher bested so easily uh, because he is just such a skilled competitor. That is right. You can see Joey once again trying to make that ascent, trying to escape. But unfortunately, Danny Rono keeps interfering as what is Johnny Bananas thinking here? Oh, what a neck breaker taking out Hollywood Hulcher as finally Roanoke manages to get pajamas off of the side of that cage. But unfortunately, it just leads to him getting a big power bomb in the center of the ring. Mm -hmm. 
Now, Sills, I will have to say, Bananas and Pajamas, they've been going all out from the start. They have been really running at 110% since this match started. And, and you got to wonder, they're trying to do that to escape as quickly as possible. That's their goal right now. Get oh. out of this cage, win the match. And it looks like they might do it. That's right. I don't know if you noticed that Danny Roanoke was actually going after Johnny, but Joey was immediately there to run interference. The only problem is now, look at this. Joey is alone in the ring with the Roanoke boys. You can see Hollywood Hulcher attempting to give chase, attempting to punch Johnny, but Johnny is already escaping out the other side, too. That is already it. That is, that is one half of Bananas and Pajamas already out of the ring, but Sills, this is... This is where it can come back to bite you in a match like this. Uh, there are, well, it oh. looks like Hollywood Holcher is, is looking to follow him, and Danny Roanoke is going to be alone. Oh, what a hurricane Rana from Roanoke putting down Joey. And now, what is Holcher thinking here, Tibbs? Holcher no. off the top. Big splash as Roanoke elbow drop. Both of those men just took out Joey Pajamas like it was nothing, but it looks like Hollywood Holcher may have gotten the worst of it. Uh-huh, you could tell. Hollywood Holcher, he overshot a little bit. He did not get all of that. That's right, but look at this. Like I was saying earlier, Joey Pajamas now alone in the ring with the Roanoke boys. And at this point, if I'm Joey, I'm going to try to find an exit as fast as I can. But Hollywood Holcher, not going to let that happen. Not at all, Sills. If you're Joey right now, you're going to have a hell of an uphill battle. And honestly, Sills, I, I think that Johnny might not have realized the situation he left his partner in. That's right. I mean, that's the thing about Bananas and Pajamas. They work best when they are together. And now this match is almost... And let's not forget the Roanoke boys. Hollywood Hulcher, he decided this. This may have been a wise move to keep them separated as Danny Roanoke is just going to town on Joey Pajamas as and Hollywood Hulcher is out. He's out. Just walking out the front door as Danny Roanoke now attempting to make an escape. Of course, Sills. Now that's got to be right there. That was a, a, a controlled effort on the part of the Roanoke boys. Danny said, go on. I'll deal with him. Don't worry about it. You just head out the door. That is right, but let's not forget. I mean, the Danny Roanoke is a man who has many years left uh, taken off the tank. He is a veteran. Being in this kind of dangerous match could definitely make it possibly his last, but it Sills. looks like Danny Roanoke don't give a damn about that. Beautiful splash off the top rope, off the top of the damn cage, but Roanoke's not done. He's got him up. Kids, he's got him up. Center of the ring, Roanoke Black Mirror. <laughs> And Tibbs, this whole time, Danny Roanoke has almost seemed like, ironically enough, the afterthought in the Roanoke boys. Everyone focuses on Hollywood Holcher. Everyone focuses on him. But Danny Roanoke, with that splash off the top, with, with that beautiful black mirror in the center of the ring, Danny Roanoke wants to earn these titles, and he's doing it tonight. That door is open. That door is open. And he's got a leg through. But no, Joey, Joey. He's trying Wait. to wrestle it back in. No. Oh, Joe, he just got up right in the nick of time. But Danny Roanoke, he's got to just wrestle free. Danny Roanoke struggling with all his might as Joey Pajamas is literally clawing tooth and nail to keep those championships. But Danny says no. Yes. Danny. Danny. Yes. Danny's yes. done it. Yes. And new JWF Tag Team Champion. They are the Roanoke Boys. And Tibbs, a well-deserved victory it was with Danny Roanoke asserting his dominance, just decimating Joey Pajamas, and finally, literally tooth and nail wrestling those titles out of the hands of Bananas in Pajamas. I've got to say, Sills, this was a hell of an effort by the Roanoke boys. And really and truly, they showed why they deserve those tag team championships. That is right. Bitter rivals turned better friends tonight at Resurrection. Congratulations to the Roanoke boys on their first 
the holding of gold in JWF. Ladies and gentlemen, the following event is scheduled for one clusterfuck and is set to occur in Birmingham, Alabama. Introducing first, he is the bearded man from the Badlands, the absolute Badlands, Scotty Moore! And in the other corner, sporting the modest, plaid on plaid on plaid, the man with the plaid crown, the plaid is plaid on the plaid, the man who knows nothing about wrestling and everything about plaid, the late tenor. I'm sorry, was I supposed to do something there? I thought this was just you two. Oh, no, yeah, no, no, that's Dylan. Hey, and Dylan. Then, <laughs> and we are the Fight Boys, and it's a show about professional and not-so-professional wrestling. Make sure to check us out, because when you're a Fight Boy, you're a Fight Boy for life! All right, Tibbs, now we move on to a match that has got some brutality waiting for us because earlier today you announced this captain's title match is going to be Falls Count Anywhere, which means that, oh, it looks like the champion wasting no time grabbing a steel chair as Big Cyrus making his entrance oh, and clips him in the legs. You know, Sills, I am not surprised by this outcome whatsoever. Oh, beautiful kick, sending that chair straight into the skull of Big Cyrus Crane. I mean, let's not forget, Big Cyrus Crane and his manager, Lawrence Whitney, have been the bane of Scotty Moore's existence for the past few weeks. Lawrence Whitney declaring that this match is going to be Scotty Moore's bill coming due. Of course, Sills, but it looks like Scotty Moore, he was thinking ahead already. <laughs> he took that... Falls count anywhere stipulation and he used it to his advantage coming out with that steel chair to start the match off with a bang. That is right. Now look at this beautiful flurry of kicks and then a massive knee strike from Scotty into an SMG onto the steel chair. One, two, two big Cyrus kicking out at the last minute and that just shows the type of competitor that big cyrus crane is i mean he's only been in this company for a cup of coffee and during that time he is already challenged for the jwf cha championship now challenging for the captain's championship big cyrus has been here for a small time but he has done a lot during that time that is right sills if you can say anything about big cyrus crane he is a tough motherfucker and he Scotty Moore knows that and he knows that he's got to whittle him down in any way possible that's right you saw Scotty Moore trying to take things back into the ring as Big Cyrus kind of just laid in a heap as oh look at that Big Cyrus with an SMG of his own a reverse SMG at that and that's the thing about Big Cyrus it's in his name we know he is a big big boy but at the end of the day, he can move like a cruiser rate, and that is the most dangerous thing when it comes to Big Cyrus. Absolutely, Sills, and you can tell if you're Big Cyrus, you know that you've got the advantage. And what the hell is Big Cyrus thinking? Luring Scotty Moore to, to our backstage area. And unfortunately, this is just giving Big Cyrus a series of weapons that he can just go after Scotty Moore with massive chalk bombs straight through that table. That is right, Sills. We are backstage. Who knows what they can find back here other than uh, copyrighted logos. That is right. And look at this. Oh, my God. That massive... That massive stand there being wielded by Big Cyrus who just cracks it into the face of Scotty Moore. But it looks like Big Cyrus ain't done yet picking him up. Oh, but it looks like Scotty Moore reverses. Oh, and drops him down. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that Scotty Moore can get an advantage right there. He's got to help Fox, his opponent, and then hit him with a big old metal tape. That is right. But now Scotty Moore going after those big kicks. Once again, that massive knee strike. But it looks like Scotty not looking to end things right now, taking things into our locker room right now. And we know Scotty Moore, he, he's brawled around this arena numerous times. He knows what's in this locker room and he knows what he can find, but oh, gets sent into one of those cubbies for his troubles. And you know, that's the thing, Sills. Doesn't matter if you know where everything is, if you can't get to it. And Big Cyrus, he is making sure that Scotty Moore doesn't get to anything. 
Oh, and Pip may be looking for the Cyrus Slam right now, picking him up. Oh, but Scotty avoiding the Cyrus Slam with those big elbow strikes into... What the hell is Scotty thinking? Oh my God! The he's strength got him of... Up. He's got him up! And oh! Little uh, turnabout being fair play right there. Scotty Moore with a chunk bomb of his own, sending Cyrus straight through it, but Scotty is not trying for a pinfall. I, I think after that early SMG during the match, he's aware it's gonna take a whole hell of a lot to keep this big man down. Of course, Sills, and that is that has been Scotty Moore's MO oh! for this entire, entire match, but it doesn't look like it's been helping that much. Cyrus Crane just slamming his slamming his fist into that chair and then subsequently into the face of Scotty Moore and once again things to seem to be firmly back in the camp of Big Cyrus. It looks like everything that Scotty Moore's trying to throw at Big Cyrus tonight. Cyrus has come back twice as strong. That is right. Oh, big punch to the gut though. And now Scotty Moore going back further in. What is he looking for here? We have seen some dangerous things go on in these halls, but wait a minute, going for another strike with that steel chair, but oh, unfortunately, Big Cyrus stops him and sends him straight into those production boxes. Of course, Sills, and those boxes themselves, they could be used as deadly weapons. They're heavy as hell. Oh, and look at this, Big Cyrus, almost mocking Scotty Moore with that bicycle knee strike, but gets sent into a production truck for his troubles, and now, what the hell? Scotty Moore going for a Cyrus slam. These two men are just stealing each other's maneuvers back and forth. Looks like it sells. They are just trying, <laughs> trying to one up each other. It looks like. That is right. But now Big Cyrus trying to lure him back to that production box. But Scotty with some big strikes straight to the gut takes him down. Oh, before going back further in, let's not forget that tractor trailer just a few ways across. Scotty Moore's gotten thrown off of it, gotten attacked, but looks like Scotty Moore, wh where is he going now? I don't know, Sills, I've never been down that hallway. Looks like he's found a doorway, and that doorway has led right back into the arena, and Scotty Moore wisely once again trying to take things back into the ring. Uh-huh, it looks like Scotty Moore didn't find the advantage he was hoping for in the backstage area. <laughs> well, I mean, let's let's not forget it wasn't Scotty who went back there. That was all Big Cyrus. Big Cyrus, let's not forget, a couple of weeks ago, assaulted Scotty Moore backstage, sent him flying off of one of our loading docks. That is what Big Cyrus was looking to do, but this time to earn a pinfall. But for right now, it looks like Scotty Moore is back in the ring, an area he knows all too well. That's right, Sills, and he's got a chair. That's right, now loading it up, up against those turnbuckles, but unfortunately, Big Cyrus just plucks him out of midair. Oh, and slams him to the earth. Ooh, that's a heavy, heavy hit right there, Sills. Scotty Moore might not be able to make use of that chair. Oh, and now what is this? Oh, reverse powerbomb, tossing him across the ring. And I don't know if you noticed that slam earlier. That wasn't just a hit to the mat. Big Cyrus's body fell down on top of Scotty as well. That is going to injure her ribs, and it's allowing Big Cyrus to pick up one hell of a head of steam right now. Of course, he's got a lot of momentum, but Scotty Moore, he's trying to take it back. Oh! oh! I think Scotty may have been trying for a splash, but instead, Big Cyrus just caught him out of midair, and unfortunately, everything Scotty seems to be throwing at Big Cyrus is just coming back tenfold. Absolutely, Sills. It's not a good situation for the captain's champion tonight. Oh, slams him down onto that guardrail right next to our audience. They are getting the uh, their tickets worth it. Oh, what the hell? No, 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 no. Big Cyrus. Oh, Ooh. reverses into a DDT. Tibbs, I think Cyrus was just about to try to throw Scotty into the audience. Well, Sills, I'll tell you, that's one way to get a pinfall. That is right. And now Scotty. Oh, wisely going after the legs with that sledgehammer. Call that the misery technique. Before picking him back up, Scotty Moore wanting to get things back into the ring. This may be falls count anywhere, but Scotty Moore, he's comfortable in that ring, but oh, he is also comfortable causing some chaos on the outside. 
Looks like it's so Scotty Moore. Of course, he's thinking about any way that he could get uh, that big victory moment over Big Cyrus, and it might just involve that table. That's right. Now, oh, it looks like a little bit of ego from Scotty Moore. Something that we know he is no stranger to having. But wait a minute. Gets plucked out of midair. Oh, and just tossed down by Big Cyrus, who has just been shrugging off everything that Scotty's been throwing at it. Looks like it sells, but this oh. is... Look at that flurry of punches. Big Cyrus wasting no time causing the punishment. Goes for the pin. Boom, but Scotty getting out at the last second. Sills, how many pinball attempts have we even seen in this match? Oh, I don't know, but we just saw our first super kick. And we may be looking at seconds as Scotty Moore backs up into that corner. No, wait. Maybe looking for a, a, a spear, perhaps the SMG. Oh, but it does not matter as Big Cyrus once again tossing him across that ring like a sack of potatoes. But Scotty fighting back with a European uppercut before ho oh, sending him skull first into that steel chair and now backing up scotty moore looking to tune up the band and finish off big cyrus with the super kick boom straight to the jaw goes for the pinfall one two two oh big cyrus kicking out Oh, look at that big Cyrus. He took a big hit to the head and then a big kick. And he still got up for more. But Scotty Moore, he's not about to have it. SMG straight down into the mat. Falls into it. One, two, two. Big Cyrus's face is a crimson mask, but he is still in it. He is unrelenting. He is still fighting. But Scotty Moore with two more super kicks puts him down. And now... Scotty Moore thinking, what is it going to take? What have I got to do? Oh, Tibbs, he has got him in that corner. What is Scotty Moore thinking? He has got him up and... Oh, no, we have seen this before, but we have never seen a man like the 500-pound Big Cyrus Crane get superplexed to the outside! My, My God! God! Well, Tibbs, they say the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And I just felt a damn earthquake wrestle through the JWF arena. My God, falls into the pinfall. Shibata, one, two, three. The winner of the match, still JWF Captain's Champion. He is. Howdy. More. Oh well, Tibbs, looks like all Scotty Moore had to do was a battle of attrition. Just keep wearing down Big Cyrus Crate. Super kicks, SMGs, superplexes to the outside. You just had to keep piling it on until Big Cyrus would finally stay down. Well, Sills, at the end of the day, that is what the Captain's Championship is all about. It is the title for the workhorse. It is the title for those with the most endurance, the people who are ready to come out every single day and defend that title if they have to. And Scotty Moore came out to do it in spades tonight. That is right, and there he is, the JWF Captain's Champion, our second ever Triple Crown Champion, Scotty Moore. And I know he's gonna wanna try to make this title reign something to be proud of. Hey, JWF True Believers, Captain Tibbs here for Merch.aloadofpurebs.com. That's right, Merch.aloadofpurebs.com. That is where you can buy all of our great merchandise from the JWF universe. Do you want t-shirts? Do you want more t-shirts? T-shirts with my face on it, with the faces of all the JWF superstars, our great wrestlers, anything. We got T-shirts, more T-shirts, tank tops, hoodies, baseball hats, masks. You can even get a phone case. You can get a phone case with my face on it. You can get a phone case with the Jebedook's face on it from JXD. You can get anything, anything you want. What is whatever your heart desires, merch.aloadofpurebs.com. Powered by T-Public. The following match is scheduled for a one ball. 
Introducing first, he is the man's man, Chuck Gibbons. Well, Tibbs, we have had a hell of a lot of great title matches tonight, but for right now, we have got a match for the biggest title in the business, the JWF World Heavyweight Champion. And of course, this man, Chuck Gibbons. Earlier we said Wrestlepalooza, he had his Wrestlepalooza moment when he earned his number one contendership. And tonight he gets to cash in and try to take out Big Cyrus Crane. So this is gonna be a hell of an altercation here tonight. Pure technical style versus a goddamn freight train. That is right, our champion Robert Hill who, let's not forget, won the championship at Wrestlepalooza in less than a minute. The man can dominate. And his opponent, he is the JWF World Heavyweight Champion, the King of the Hill, Robert And Tibbs, you know it is no tall, it is no small task, forgive me, to stand up against this man. To stand up against Robert Hill, especially when the JWF Championship is on the line. I mean, let's not forget one of the best champions we've had in a long time. Your son, Chuck Tibbs, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Robert Hill at Wrestlepalooza. And within seconds, his, he was getting pinned to the mat. And to my opinion, I gotta know what Chuck Gibbons is made out of, that he thinks that he could do better than that. I don't know, Sills, but I can tell you something. Chuck Gibbons exudes a, a style that I haven't seen in many, many years. And he might just have that old tough wrestler attitude to back it up. And that's right. And there it is. What they are fighting for. The JWF World Heavyweight Championship. Hold it high, Shibby. Ah, got it timed right on that one. Good uh, job. <laughs> but... The one story heading into this is Chuck Gibbons. Chuck Gibbons, a man who has been saying this whole time that Robert Hill, yes, he is good in this match, but he is not good at technical wrestling. That is what Chuck Gibbons aspires to be, and it looks like that is how they're starting things off, and Robert actually doing seemingly well. Ooh, slams him to the mat, and Tibbs, that is a, that may be a good foreboding of things to come immediately out wrestling Chuck Gibbons but it looks like they are once again back to standing on even ground I have to say very surprising uh, Robert Hill he might have uh, out wrestled Chuck oh, wait, Gibbons wait, wait, with wait. that roll up roll up roll up goes for it one two oh, barely kicking out is Robert Hill but what, what, what the hell small package small package one two oh, kicking out Let us, let's not forget those type of moves is what led to Chuck Gibbons nearly pinning Robert just a few short weeks ago in that epic tag match. Uh, I mean, if he can keep this up, he may be able to beat Robert Hill tonight and win the championship, but oh my God, those flurries of fists may not let it happen. Of course not, Sil. Chuck Gibbons, he's obviously trying to keep Robert Hill on his toes, not thinking too oh, much. Cr crucifix <laughs> pin, oh! Unfortunately, that crucifix got him a little too close to the ropes, but mm -hmm. that could have spelled doom for Robert Hill if that was in the center of the ring. Absolutely, Robert Hill, he is used to a very quick wrestling style, if you even call it wrestling. I mean, he just overpowers his opponent without any thought whatsoever. And now he's being forced to actually work in a real wrestling match. Chuck Gibbons is not going down like many of his previous opponents. That is right, now you can see Chuck rolling to the outside, seeking an advantage. Ooh, tosses Robert back in before going to the top rope. Not a place we usually see Gibbons. And ooh, unfortunately, it does not pay off well for him. And that is the one thing I would struggle with when it comes to Chuck Gibbons. He clearly has a game plan in this. The, those big suplexes, the roll-ups, those sneak pins, and trying to divert from that, going to those high-flying maneuvers, going to moves he's not as familiar with, I don't think is gonna pay off for Gibbons in the long run, but those three suplexes may just do that as he drags him to the center of the ring, falls into the pinfall. One, two, ooh, kicking out is Robert Hill. Of course, Robert Hill, 
Uh, he's never been stress tested in this way before though Sills. We've got to see how he can hold up to, to a more endurance based battle. You don't know if, if he could go for five minutes in the ring and then in that five minutes he's so winded that he could barely stand up. That's right, big kicks and now Robert Hill doing what he does best and that is destroy. Just sending Chuck Gibbons skull first into the mat. Goes for a pinfall, but ooh, Chuck kicks out at one. Uh-huh, Chuck Gibbons, of course, he, he's got the ability to stand up to these huge, terrifying moves that Robert, Hill's, uh, that Robert Hill has at his disposal. And uh, for that, I've got to give him respect already. But Robert Hill, he is not letting up. That is right, and now, oh, might have been trying to set up for that Olympic slam, but instead, Robert gets put in the ropes. Both of these men reversing everything, but Chuck finally, oh, drops him to the mat. And now, Gibbons aiming for something big, but Robert Hill fighting back. Beautiful fireman's carry, takeover, and now Robert Hill once again back in control. And if I'm Chuck Gibbons right now, Tibbs, what advice would you give me? Sills, so I'd have to be worried about uh, everything right now if I was Chuck Gibbons. Uh, obviously, his plan so far has not really met with a lot of success. So I'd have to say, at this point, if you can get back up, Chuck, try to hit that Olympic Slam maneuver. Try to go for those suplexes, those power maneuvers that will keep Robert Hill on his back and down because that is the only hope you've got a winner right now. What a headlock driver sends him skull first into the mat. Oh, before, what is this? Goes for a beautiful fisherman's carry. Suplex bridges into a pinfall, but luckily, Gibbons manages to get out at the last minute. And now, oh, look at this. I don't know if this is mocking Gibbons or what, as he just drops him into a headlock, and it allows Gibbons to immediately take advantage. Yes, well, Sills, it doesn't look like it lasted for long, though. Robert Hill, he has had an answer for everything Chuck Gibbons has thrown at him. Ooh. What a throw, and look at that, Robert Hill being forced to roll to the outside, and now Gibbons going to the top rope once again. Not a wise move, but he connects with that beautiful splash. What a maneuver there from Chuck Gibbons, but Robert Hill immediately back to his feet, taking control. As Robert Hill, he's just been able to overcome everything that Chuck Gibbons has thrown at him today, and oh my God. That's right, he's got him hooked up for the gas lighter, straight down to the mat, goes for the pinfall, one, two, three. The winner of the match, and still JWF World Heavyweight Champion, the King of the Hill, Robert Hill. Tibbs, I am reminded of the words of Robert Hill a few weeks ago on JWF Ignition. He said it does not matter how many holds you know when Robert knows the only hold that matters, and that is the gaslighter. And he proved it right there as Chuck Gibbons hit him with just about everything that he had. He wasn't able to get off that Olympic slam, but that gaslighter put an end to Chuck Gibbons' championship dreams. And Sills, so that is all it took. One singular gaslighter. Robert Hill had some great offense in this match, but he didn't have anything that I would say is particularly overly impactful, except for that one singular move. That gaslighter put Chuck Gibbons down for the count. It was over from the moment he hooked the arms. That is right, and that is why Robert Hill still stands tall as your JWF World Heavyweight Champion as we move on to our next pay-per-view, Cash in the Bat. But who's going to fight Robert? Who will be the number one contender? Well, that's what we're going to find out on the next episode of JWF Monday Night Ignition because, Tibbs, you have set up one hell of a main event. I had two cells. I'm not sure if we'd have many takers right now coming at Robert Hill's throne without me having to make a match. That is right, which is why on the next episode of JWF Ignition, the two undefeated men in this company right now, the Jebeduk and the Dylan, will be going one-on-one -on -one with the winner becoming the number one contender to Robert Hill's championship. But outside of that, Tibbs, this has been one hell of a resurrection. We have seen Scotty Moore retain his title in a brutal false count anywhere match. 
the Roanoke boys claiming the titles inside of a steel cage. Valkyrie retaining against Ayana. And unfortunately, that brutal beatdown of Papa Bliss thanks to the nightmare Ghazi. So it has been a night of ups and downs, a real veritable roller coaster in this year's resurrection. And I think we are going in 2021 as strong as hell. That is right. But until next time, he's been Captain Tibbs. I've been Silver Spoon. And this has been JWF Resurrection. And we will see you next time.